There are times when like a coach or a manager is going through such a tough stretch and is kind of so embattled that you almost feel like you'd be doing a favor by firing them. And that was the first time it crossed my mind with Boone was last night. He's out of things to say. There's nothing more that you can say about this team. Like, what more can he say? How many meetings can you have? You know, how many guys can say, like, we're not pulling our weight. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. Well, no kidding. Like, Boone is right. He's being honest. The season is on the line every single night, and talk is cheap, which kind of sounds like they'd be diametrically opposed to one another. But by being so honest and because we're looking for someone to blame, he actually put himself even more in the crosshairs because he says what he says before the game, which is about the season being on the line. And then the Yankees went out and played the Angels and had the same exact lackluster effort, bad defense, bad situational hitting that we've seen all throughout this season. Now, if Boone does get fired midseason, which again, I never thought the Yankees wanted to do, really just crossed my mind last night because I think they have nowhere else to turn. You know, Boone's part of the problem because everybody's part of the problem. And it would be your easiest change. You know, besides shuffling things around in the infield, we talked about yesterday, calling up Floreal. We talked about the internal options they have. But in terms of the message, in terms of the vibe, in terms of all that stuff, that really does come on Boone. And the fact that they couldn't respond after he sort of laid down Really the strongest language I think he's used talking about this team since he's been the manager. Right. And they respond and actually they don't respond. I think Boone has now put a target on his back, whether it's totally fair or not. Now it's more of a target than it ever has before because it looked like the team just tuned him out. Well, it's just, let's look at it two different ways. I mean, and there's two parts of the conversation. What falls on Boone? What doesn't fall on Boone, right? So, you know, hold that off here for a second from my standpoint. Number one is, I hate the messaging before the game about the season being on the line. Why, it's true. I I don't know if it's true. I mean, they've got six and a half games to make up in the American League East, right? So, I mean, you look at it, it's not like they're 12 games out, 14 games out, anything like that. I I don't know if the I don't know if a Monday night against the Angels, my message to my team would be the season is on the line. Why would it be on the line more than it was last week or the week previous? This team hasn't played consistent baseball, so I don't know if I'm Aaron Boone where I'm going to put that kind of message on before a, a Monday night with Mike King on the mound against the Anaheim against the Los Angeles Angels in the Bronx. That's number 1. If you're Aaron Boone, he's put the target on his back, but it's his own of his own volition because he decided to give you that statement before the game last night. So, I hated that number 1. Number 2, they go out there and play yet another slop fest filled baseball game. Um, where you, know, you see the errors, you see the mistakes. DJ LeMay, you had a bad game. Mm-hmm. I mean, the you fall behind Shohei Otani hitting a curve from Mike King early, you know, for his 26th home run of the season. The Angels go on to win uh, and win that game, you know, and win that game five to three. And then after the game, you get the quote from Aaron Boone the compete and the intent and the focus was excellent. Makes little to no sense. I mean, that is just words put together in a sentence where you scratch your head after the game and you say, why the hell would the manager say that? Number one, before the game, before the game, you say the season is on the line. I do not after the game. If you're going to be Aaron Boone, you got to be consistent. So if you want to tell me before the game, the season is on the line starting tonight against the Angels. Well, then it's all about the results. Then I have to, by hook or by crook, I have got to win the baseball game. It's about wins. It's not about style points. It's not about how you look. It's not about any of that. It's about winning a baseball game on a Monday night against the Angels in the Bronx. After the game, you cannot change the message and talk about the intent. Cannot change the message and talk about, uh, you know, the, the fact that their focus was excellent. No, no, it wasn't because you didn't win. So you can't have both messages. If you're Aaron Boone and this is where, you know, he's getting caught up and you want to say, well, Moose, it's semantics. Well, it is a little bit, but it's the messaging from a major league manager is watching his team scuffle along. That's two games over the 500 mark. You got to be consistent with your messages. So if you're going to give me that message before the game and then watch your team go out there and have another slop fest filled baseball game where you lose to the Angels after the game, I can't hear about the intent I can't hear about the focus because you know what? It wasn't good enough. That's really what it comes down to. It wasn't. You have to then 
double down on that message after the game if you're Aaron Boone. You can't let your team off the hook and talk about the intent of the focus if you're going to talk about the season being on the line for each and every one of them, whether it be the players, their future in New York, whether it be about on him, his future as manager, whether it be about Cashman, his future as president and general manager. If you're going to do that, if you're going to put that line in the sand, after the game, you can't talk about intent and focus yeah, but because I, I don't want to hear it. That, to me, is lack of consistency, and those are words that are being thrown out there that make little to no sense. But I think that he will always revert back to being the player's manager, right? Where can't do he, it. Well, I think when he said that our season is on the line every night, the reason why I actually liked it, sure, you have Michael King on the mound. We'll get to Michael King and about the game plan that he has, at least in his own mind, and why that is so off, but... I think the reason why you say that is because, you know, at some point you have to apply some pressure to this team, don't you? Like, at some point you have to tell them, like, they, you know, Aaron Aaron Judge said last week we've been having team meetings and the theme was enough is enough. Well, maybe coming from the players, it's not getting through. So maybe coming from the manager, you know, everyone's been, you know, waiting for Boone to actually come out and say something. Well, he actually did before the game. He is trying to apply pressure. And you know what? The team didn't show. I mean, they didn't get beat so thoroughly, but that was a very winnable game for them. And it was because of their own mistakes. That's the reason why they did not win. The the Yankees, we've said this all season. The the Yankees' biggest opposition is not the team they're playing. It's themselves. And so – the fact that he actually did try to apply pressure and then they showed that kind of performance, like where else can he go? Well, I, continue to put the pressure on. And just say like our well, team no, stinks. Well, no, like, no, I, no, it's not a matter of no, no, gonna, he's, he's never, gonna he's never gonna do to, that. To he's never gonna do that. It, how about manager. after the game is good not good enough. Not good enough. Our performance tonight was not good enough. I can't hear about intent and focus of the team in a loss. I really can't. I mean, if you're going to say what you did before the game, and I don't even, as as I said before, a couple minutes ago, I don't even like the fact that Aaron Boone said that before the game, Maggie. But if you're going to say that. If not now, when? Then you have to continue along with that messaging. You have to continue along with the messaging. You cannot, you cannot, you know, uh, you you cannot slap him on the rear end and then pat him on the back after after a loss. You can't do it. Not not if you're, you're talking about having a feel for your team. You can't do that if you're Aaron Boone. That messaging does not work. I cannot hear. You know what? Aaron Boone, I'm not talking about throwing his players under the bus. He's never going to do that. But after the game, he can tell me, Maggie, after the game, he can go, you know what? Wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough. I can't, t- I can't hear about the intent and focus being excellent. Aaron, you lost the game. This is a results-oriented business. We gave the Yankees all the accolades in the world for winning 103 games and having a myriad of different injuries. It's about the results, being up for manager of the year. It's about the results in the regular season. That's what the Yankees now, different than when George owned the team, but now they look at it and say, well, we're going to build for the regular season and hope for the best come the playoffs and come October. Well, if that is going to be the case, well, The regular season right now is an unmitigated disaster. Mm -hmm. As we've said time and time again, whether getting in their own way, whether it be a bad situational hitting team, whether it be the downturn when you look at the starting rotation, whether it be the downturn when you look at Aroldis Chapman, when you look at the messaging from the manager, when you look at what Cashman had to say. I mean, there are multiple issues with this team. So if you want to call up and say, well, it's not Aaron Boone's fault. It's not his job. I mean, it's his job should not be on the line. This is more on Brian Cashman. True. I mean, it, it, you could go a lot of different ways of what led it, of what has led this Yankee team to where they're at. I think probably in all likelihood, you're going to see Aaron Boone lose his job. That's going to be the first domino to fall. They'll try that, even though there might not be a great guy that they believe will step in just to change the messaging because this team is responding. I was disappointed. And I know, I know Boone sometimes can drive people crazy with some of the things he has to say and consistently supporting his players. He has remained on point. You cannot have those two different messages yesterday before a game and then after a loss if you're the manager. I was supremely disappointed with what Boone had to say after the game because I wanted Boone not to go ripping you know, shirt off, flipping over a table, no, screaming and hollering. Right. But you know what? There's got to be a sense of accountability. We were not good enough. We were not good enough. This is not about controlling our own. I can't hear about intent. I can't hear about focus. I can't hear about all that being excellent in a loss. It's not excellent if you lose the baseball game. Well, and I think the bottom line is 
the message, whether it's consistent, inconsistent, whatever it is, nothing is working. Nothing has worked. And I think when you have players like Giancarlo Stanton, who later on in his press conference and when he was asked a more pointed question about Boone, defended him and said it's on the players, we're the ones not performing. But when he says that we haven't showed up every night, it's like so obvious and true, but it also is very revealing. You know, the idea that superstar players wouldn't show up every night. It's just not the standard that people are used to when it comes to the New York they're Yankees. Paid for profe- they're paid professional athletes. Like the, the idea that you wouldn't be able to show up. And listen, I know it's 162. It'd be insane to think every night, but like there's been more off nights than not. And Oh, no doubt. And so that's why we find ourselves here. And for Stanton to also say, we're putting the work in, we're doing everything right. It's like that. I'm sorry. I just, I, I don't know if I can believe that at this point. We've talked about the processes, you know, Moose, I know you hate that word, whatever, but like (laughs) you talk about the, you know, fundamentals and they're putting the work in like that's just not evident. It's just not evident because we actually saw stretches where the Yankees did tighten up their defense. It really coincided very nicely with their pitching kind of taking over and they put together a really nice stretch of baseball and it really thought, okay, this is the Yankees. They're going to turn around, become way more consistent. And it never stuck. They have the ability to play good defense. They're just not doing it. They're not being consistent. And so for Stanton to be like, you know, we're putting the work in, you're not. Or you're putting it in the wrong way. Or you're not focusing on the right things. We go back to an article written in Newsday. Remember, Eric Boland had the article about how scouts were surprised that at the lower levels of the Yankee organization, they're not taking extra infield BPs. They're not, not BPs, infield practice. They're not doing extra defensive drills. The fact that like this is is organizational, whether it's guys coming up through the system well, or even guys who are free agents or who are traded here, like Giancarlo Stanton. Like I, you know, he doesn't even play the outfield, so it's not even him, but you know what I mean? No, I, Maggie, I just I, don't I, believe him when he says that. Well, I, I get it, and and they made it sure to point out yesterday during the broadcast last night that they did, even with the hundred degree heat yesterday afternoon, that the pitchers were on the field early and they were doing, you know, they were doing infield practice, um, and and that's fine. I mean, but it comes down to execution. I mean, you, you want to? I mean, DJ Lemayhu on a relay throw and a perfect throw from Clint Frazier from the right field wall. Hits DJ LeMayhew. He's got one stride to throw it home. He throws the ball eight feet over Gary Sanchez until left. I mean, it was it's kind it of was, shocking. I mean, actually. it was just a, it was just an atrocious throw. And and a good throw gets the runner at home. And it, it is a tremendous relay play where maybe the Yankees build it. It was an it was an atrocity of a throw. I mean, it's one of the worst throws that you've seen in quite some time. And it wasn't even all that deep. I mean, he's sitting there basically near the infield grass, you know, between first and second base, and he's making that throw. It was an atrocity. So I mean, I you look at all that, and and Maggie, I, I you know, you go to the organization, what's being taught in the minors, okay, and then you look at what is on the major league level right now. What is going to change? Like, when is it? You know, they they take three straight series, they get swept by Boston, and then you say, okay, well that'll wake them up, right? You got the Angels coming to town for four, three night games, and then an afternoon game on Thursday, and then you got the Mets. You know, this upcoming weekend on a holiday weekend, what's going to wake this team up, right? We're not, how many games do we have to click off? Because we're like, you know, it's only 40 games. Oh, it's only 50. It's only 60. Well, we're at game 65. We're now at game 78. And and now the Yankees are still what they are, right? And so you get the messaging from Stan after the game. I mean, how exactly, if you're John Carlos Stan, I mean, who is, is nowhere n- resembles the NL MVP that he was with the Marlins as the hitter. Can't play the outfield because the Yankees have the fear of God that he'd get hurt, right? They have fear of God of him getting hurt running the bases. So, I mean, you have Giancarlo Stan talking about the fact of effort, right, and not being there every single night. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, that, that is where you say, well, wh- something's amiss here. So That's you wanna, damning. Yeah, that is. I mean, and that is, a, that is a knock on Aaron Boone. But it's also a knock on the leadership of this team, which we talked about yesterday. Who the hell are the leaders of this team? Who is stepping up and saying, this does not work? Guys, I mean, we're putting on the pinstripes. We're putting on the road grays. We're representing a very, very proud franchise. And look at the way that we are playing this year. Because there's enough talent on this team to be better than what they are. Something is missed. I mean, something is amiss. It's like, you know, you, you go back to the Wizard of Oz. Are they a team without a heart? I mean, at times they're a team without a brain. They've got no soul to this team. There's no passion to this team. So you look at Aaron Boone. You look at Brian Cashman, who tells you a week and a half ago that we're all in the same boat together. Well, Cash, go fix it. 
I mean, that, then it's on him to go fix it. I mean, because th- th- this team has showed you enough. This is not a small sample size, Maggie. We're getting close to the halfway point of the MLB regular season. There has to come a point where Brian Cashman says, I have seen enough. I don't care if I have to dump guys at 25 cents on the dollar. This is not working. Well, you mentioned about the voices in the locker room and who's been stepping up to try to rally this team. According to Michael King, a lot of guys. Everybody, a lot of the vets. um, Gardy, Judge, Cole, uh, O'Day. Darren O'Day. Boy, they're all, all very vocal. I mean, we're going to Darren O'Day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is where's, where we're at. Brett Gardner. Like, where's DJ? Are they going? You know, how far down the the list are we going? I mean, do something. Justin I mean, be Wilson. a little, be a little prideful here. Look at what's going on on a day in day out basis. I thought for a second he was just going to name every single person on the roster. And Maggie, if, <laughs> the forty man too. Here's what it comes down: if this team doesn't respond after Boone's declaration yesterday, yeah, I mean he's going to get fired. He will. I mean, Aaron, and he put Aaron the target Boone, on and him. I, I don't on his think it's back. a guy putting him out of his misery. I think Aaron Boone loves being the manager of the Yankees. I think Aaron Boone. I, I, I don't. No, there's I know. just nothing more he can say. It, 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 no, there, there really is not. There really is not. It's on the players. He's putting the players in a position to try and be successful. He's dealing with a lot this year as well. Let's not forget. I mean, there's probably a handful of guys on the team when you look at the spin rates that were probably using the hard stuff, so to speak. Mm-hmm. When you look, and, and so when you look at that, you have guys that are trying to redefine themselves as pitchers as well that you need to lean on right now. A, Garrett Cole, which we saw on Sunday was a disaster against the Boston Red Sox. And then you're dealing with a lineup that isn't anywhere close to what we expected them to be in the regular season. No one ever had a question about this team in the regular season being able to score runs. Everyone had a question about October. Well, they're not scoring runs in the regular season. And because they're not scoring runs, Maggie, you're seeing the other issues with this team that they were able to cover up with their offense, whether it be the base running, whether it be the defense, the situational hitting, all of those things because they're not putting up crooked numbers. They're not beating up on pitching like they have in years gone by. Are the days numbered for Aaron Boone? And if so, is that fair? 877-337-6666. 